Welcome to SRB TV. We are here. Hello everyone, welcome to our episode of Super Reaction Bros. I'm Chris. I'm Christopher. And on today's episode, we are continuing our very special SRB TV, very special presentation. See how I fixed my mistake from like five seconds earlier? Uh, for the last two and a half parts of the Justice League Snyder Cut. Yes. So previously on the Justice League Snyder Cut, we uh, saw parts... Um, po oh, yeah, parts three and four. Um... We can break it down if you want. Yeah, break it yeah, down. You have a better, um... Yeah, breakdown. oh, I see here. Barry, we see Barry pretty much saving uh, Iris for that little brief scene, little creep, uh, creepy, fun little scene. Um, Thank you for adding the word creepy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, we got to see, you know, Victor's backstory, where he comes from, where he, his family, and his, you know, you know what he's been going through personally. It's really cool. It was really cool to see that, and 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 finally get the more of a personal connection with his character, um, uh, of like who he is and like why we should really, really care about him, or at mm -hmm. least the character. Um, we'll see here. Uh, we saw not only his backstory, but also got to see, you know. His accident and stuff like that, that you know, that he had with his mom and the passing and all that type of stuff. Um, we see, uh, we got to see pretty much their first attempt, uh, was a, not first attempt, but uh, we see Steppenwolf when they finally attack uh, uh, pretty much the Atlanteans, pretty much, to go talk, to try to get, get the box. So it was a nice, good little extended scene, fight scene with Mira uh, and Steppenwolf until Arthur shows up. And does his best to take him on and, and things like that. Uh, it was a fun. It was a, that was a f really fun fight. I don't know why it just felt fun, you know, because it was like really put together well. Um, I was uh, we didn't even bring that up either. It's like how we got to see pretty much where uh, uh, Cyborg hid uh, the mother box for man. You know where he hid it pretty much, and it was really good where he hid it because you wonder where he just show up where he put that at. Right. And like it was like, where did he have that stash? Um, and then part four, we finally we got that big, we had that big first fight scene as the with the group together trying to take on Steppenwolf, you know, working together, and it was a great scene. The music was phenomenal. Each character had each like with their own like, you know, separate a good amount of time within this uh, bit by bit, and I, I freaking we we loved it. It was just it was it was just a great scene they put together. Um, uh, was it, uh, they brought up uh, the anti-life equation. They bring that up of how... Yeah, because of course it turns out Dark Side left the anti-life equation on the planet they had the Great War. It turns out that planet was Earth. Ooh, that planet was Earth. It seems like he's been pl capturing planets for so long he forgot which planet he left it on. <laughs> That's what it was in a way. It's like, I he forgot where I left it. car beepers. Yeah. yeah. Beep, beep, beep. But even that, it's like one of those, he, he left his, like, his sketch or drawing or notes at someone's house saying visit, he's been visiting so many people they forgot which one it was. It's like, crap, why did I leave it? Um, we, we got to see, finally, we got, finally got to hear like Darkseid speak and stuff like that and talk to Steppenwolf and, wow, just a great voice. Uh, was it, what was the guy's name I brought up? Um, um uh, Ray Fit. Oh, mm. I'm trying to remember his name. God. I don't remember his name. Yeah, the guy who voices Dark Side. I think he did a great job with the voice. It's behind you there, yeah. It, yeah, um, he did a great job. Uh, I have to look at the number. Because they brought up the number box number to use. 61982 for the box. Because they also dived into uh, where uh, the mother box for man ended up at, you know, how we get our hands on it, and of course showing the history and how, how the scientists finally got uh, got it up. Ray Porter is the guy's name. Uh, Ray Porter, who voices uh, Darkseid, phenomenal. Supposedly he also did, he also did the facial uh, the, the facial features for Darkseid. Okay, so according to this, I, I believe this is, June 19th, 1982 was the original uh, first appearance of Cyborg. Then that's where that's. Yeah. Um, so that's where 61982 comes from. Um, and, we, and like I said, we got to see uh, more of Cyborg's uh, origin, not just, not Victor's origin, but more of uh, Cyborg, or, or, you know, it, more of like him kind of like, you know, kind of like piecing everything together and, you know, how he was put together, um, and a deeper meaning behind the Mother Box and what it represents, which really kind of changed the scene and set it up to, a, to be like, 
Okay, now we definitely all agree of why we have to use this box to protect Superman. Slight correction. It's the first time he had his own cover. His own cover, okay. He, for, he had his own solo cover. Okay. For uh, and then, and of course, the big ball that dropped, and, and that is uh, Martian Manhunter shows yeah. up. Uh, just so it looks like trying to trying to get more questions out of Lois, but also trying to encourage Lois to get back on her feet and get back to doing what she does best. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a really big surprise there, and seeing Henry Lennox, uh, you know, playing that character and that role. Yeah. Uh, but enough said. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> I think I've talked a little bit too much on this part, uh, this final part. But let's dive into this for. Uh, again, this is Zack Snyder's Justice League Part 5, 6, and I believe the epilogue as well. That's but, why I keep on saying two and a half. Yeah, so right now it's just chapter 5 and 6 for now. So, here we go. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. What do you think, man? You think she'd ever go for a younger guy? <laughs> 5,000 years old, Barry. She's 5,000 years old. Every guy's a younger guy. Every guy is younger. Guy. <laughs> I love that. She's five thousand year old, dude. Any guy is younger. Yeah, she's over two. She's over at least like what? Forty million years old. Not all the king's horses, not all the king's men. for once, I'm operating strictly on faith, not on reason. Mm-hmm. But if you start not like him. this little box of tricks, I mean, I like that scene. That was a good scene. Yeah. It's like him trying to, it's like he's always used to seeing Bruce deal with facts. He always deals with facts. And it's like, like he said, you know, he's got faith. You know, it's like this is a first. I'm like, are you sure? Jesus Christ. And fucking look. If I didn't know this was a superhero from I thought this was like, like. The test came back Oh, we don't, we also don't get that line about, uh, I'm going get about, wow, you really do wear a bat, dress as a bat. Yeah. This explains how nobody's there. Yeah. So it's picking up a micro of a alien origin. A micro of alien origin. That, that doesn't make any sense. It's gotta be a false alarm. Alright, people, shut it down. Don't, don't, you there. I don't call it. I was mistaken. Now you know why. Everybody out there, nobody right. out there. Trust nobody us, we know what we're doing. There. So. Cool. Like, trust us, we know what we're doing. That's why he sees them. I like that because remember, you, they get there. It's like you think there's got to be staff there or something, right? Besides just the, the guards, I can't with deal with time. Oh shit! Explains why she's there. Explain. Cause remember her usual routine. She explains why she's there because in the fur in the that in the, in the beginning, beginning, and she so, always made a routine to always go to the memorial. Now they explain better of why she's there. Why she's there instead when, of having Bruce, you know, all oh, she's the. The secret weapon. Holy shit! Whoa! Whoa! What the? F ah! Ah! Uh, Chris, explain. Remember what we always wondered? 
why did nobody keep an eye on the mother box? How did they get the mother box? This one explains why he was able to get the mother box. Yeah. It senses danger. It senses danger. Now it explains why he attacks them. It's self-defense. It better explains why he attacks them. Out of nowhere. Uh, That's a better explanation. Hello, no. Hello, no. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I love the next song. Side himself. 
the show, Chris? Yes, I did. Come on, run, Barry, run. There you go. You gotta break the rule. To break the rule. He's like, you gotta do this. You gotta break the rule now. different. Snyder scene, it's not even yeah. funny. Sleep film. Yes. And suffice to say, you can kind of see why there was definitely some stuff taken out in the finale portion. Yeah. yeah. But then again, there was stuff that was better explained. <laughs> um. Let me see. Where to start? Where do we start? It's uh, part five, Frank. Because I feel like I don't. I don't feel like taking forever. So I do want to discuss the overall aspect of this. No, I know. It, we was skim so. through like the the big parts in each part. So in part five, um, of course they pretty much they bring they do bring back Superman. You know they they bring him back. They bring him back. They still they fix the scene where they take him on near the memorial. And yeah, that, and then they also fix the scene of like who was, you know, what happened to the, the the mother box, you know, when nobody was there, you know, they help explain that a uh, bit, a whole bunch more. Um, then we also got for a quick moment, pretty much, uh, Cyborg did have that his own nightmare sequence, or at least 
the thing was trying to warn him about, you know, if everything goes wrong, this is what's going to happen type of situation. Even the ship was trying to warn him going, yeah, you better, uh, you know, fix this. You know, it's like, he's like, or right, not even that, just please, it's like, you know, please just, you know, don't do this, don't do this. The ship was trying to warn saying, do not do this, but they did it anyways. Then we got, yeah, that vision of what would happen. Yeah, and now we see why Flash says Lois is the key, because once Lois dies, he loses everything. He loses everything. He just loses it all. You know, it's a, it's a typical, it's, he, he, uh, Zack Snyder did, he grabbed that, like, you know, concept of, like, with, uh, with injustice, where if, you know, you, you know, he killed her, or at least she dies, he just goes freaking evil as fuck. You know, that's what it is, because he, he's everything, he, she's everything to him. Um, mm. yeah, see here, um, mm. uh, was it also, uh, was it, a? Uh, uh, you know uh, how his Victor's father uh, made that sacrifice. You know he made that ultimate sacrifice. You know realizing what he had to do just to get, you know, just to buy them some time or at least do whatever he could to try to, just, to stop it or destroy. Yeah. It. You know. Um, part six uh, was really cool because I like how it was it. Um, I like how the Alfred finally first meets the group. That was just too funny. Yeah. Where you're just like, hi. And, you know, he's just yeah. like, hey, uh, that, um, so obviously the most, the most, the two biggest, there's a couple biggest things that they find, they quell, mm, like, the parts why didn't they go off their motor box? Well, this one they show, they did, they failed, um, and then of course the final fight scene. Yeah, you know, they explained a lot of, like, how they found him or, you know, where, you know, where he was hiding out this whole time on Earth. Um, oh, I'm trying to see here. Man, there's a lot of big stuff in part six. Uh, so, okay, yeah, let's talk about... We can focus on part six, man. Like, yeah, so a lot, a lot things. of things. Okay, so, yeah. Um, okay, to be fair, a tiny part of me wanted the red, the red sky. A tiny part of me kind of wanted the red sky. Because, like, I don't know, it just didn't... I don't know, the dark you side... See why, you see what, why? What it is is that you understand why they, they made it brighter. Because it's like, okay, you know, it's too dark. You know, too dark. But... You know, it's like, I think it would have worked out either which way, either if it was light or dark. Um, uh, man, the Superman, it's superhero poses, man. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of great more, they extended the fight, there was a lot more scenes that made sense that weren't yeah. as goofy as in the... the they made, they made perfect sense. And, when, and that's what I liked about this, you know, it's like, you know, they weren't like, wait, 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 Bruce, what are you doing? They knew what he was going to be doing. So it's like they still went with the plan and things like that, you know? Yeah, honestly, if I had one big, like, thing I didn't like about the final fight is that they killed Steppenwolf. I, look, I know that it's the main rule. It's the cardinal rule of, you know, the superheroes don't kill. And I can't understand why they would kill the Parademons. Yeah. I get that. But then killing off, like, just, I don't know, it didn't. Like, I didn't mind it if they toss him back in and the, then uh, Darkseid killed him. Yeah, maybe Darkseid would kill him or he... he for or, failing. Yeah, yeah, he killed him for failing. Yeah, that part I would understand, yeah? Yeah, I, I don't... That's If I had one thing that, like, one thing I could really fix on that aspect mm -hmm. is that they killed Steppenwolf. Yeah, that's... Uh, that was... Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we get the epilogue stuff, which is like... Uh, oh no, wait, sorry, sorry. No, no, sorry, let's talk the about the best thing. moment. The best moment was Barry. Was the, they add the scene where you reverse his time, so that way you, know, you can touch the combined and the box. Like, and what I loved is that they, if you think about it, in this film, I, I know I'm stepping ahead just a little bit, but in this film, each character had their just that epic moment. That moment that really defined yeah. a hero, or who they are. And, you know, you have one with Cyborg. This one was just very full on. I started getting choked up. I was choking up pretty much the moment he started talking, you know, about it to his dad and stuff like that. You yeah. know, in a way, telling him, "Go remember, you know, you know, I, I was one of the greats. You know, I was like, I, I was one of them. You know, I, I did my best. I did. I gave it a. I gave it my all. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, it had, like I said, it had me choked up because it was just phenomenally done. Well, it's just the way he did. They did it. You know, it's just like. Barry was just running circle, circle, circles, and all of a sudden, just this happens, and this just shows that it's like it brings back up uh, from um, when they when, when pretty much uh, when when he, when he brought back Superman, where he's like, you know, whenever I run, I, I'm able to manipulate time. This that yeah. it comes right back where it's like he's like, this is my moment. You know, this is I have to do this. 
this has to be saved. So just seeing that just like was beautifully done. Yeah. Man, it was just a wonderful scene of how it all went down. It was just amazing. I mean, well done overall. Damn, man, just such a scene. great scene added to the overall. Um, yeah, I like that scene. Like I said seven was the only part that bothered me about that. Um, yeah. Epilogue. Epilogue ran on a bit long, and we pretty much got the most Zack Snyder Zack Snyder scene we've seen in this entire movie mm -hmm. with the Nightmare Vision. There it is. Just no, that's what it is. Justice League of America, created by Gardner Fox. So that's why, sorry, I just now remembered there why we saw a fourth world created by Jack Kirby. Yeah, yep. he's the one who created a, uh, the new guy. The new guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and to, uh, to epilogue, we start off with Cyborg pretty much, and he starts listening to what his father was really trying to say, you know, as, you know, as father, a father yeah. they can be. And then, they, of course, they set stuff up. Like, aside from, like, the final part of part six, we're showing Dark Side is getting ready to go to Earth. Aside from that, you got, like, um, Ryan Choi getting promoted. They specifically tell him what his field is, which is a nice thing. The, the nanotechnology. Then, um, then finding a place to be able to build the Hall of Justice at. Yeah. Um, Barry showing off to his dad that they, they finally he finally got a job. Yeah. His foot. Which I love. To me, I love this version of the, than, than, than the actual theatrical. Because the theatrical version was just more, he showed it. And he was just goofing off, you know, it, it, oh, not goofing off, he was just like, they were kind of celebrate it quietly. Here I loved it because it was more emotional, the connection of yeah. like, you know, my son did it, my son, he's got his foot in the door, he's got his foot in the door, you know, it's like, I loved it, that's why I laugh even when he's like, please dad, please calm down, we don't want you to get maced again. You know, <laughs> I love that. And you know, and then um, we saw, yeah, and then um, we saw Aquaman, uh, where it's like, he saw, um, what's his, what's his name? Um, he, yeah, he saw Mira, and he, uh, Zuko, what's, what's the guy's name? God damn it. Volko. Volko, thank you. He saw Volko pretty much, and even he's like, you know, it's like, in a way, it's the type of thing where he's like, you know, I, I, I gotta do something first. And like, that's where he's like, I need, I need to go back to see my dad. Yeah. You know, so that's what show, it's like, in a way, that was setting up to, that, you know, for Aquaman itself. Um, and then, let's see here, Clark. Yeah, then we see, uh, where Clark was at, pretty much. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah Clark back. suiting up. Um, back still wearing a black suit. Yeah, Victor Vizzi in the family grave. Um, Batman's, Batman's staying atop the iconic uh, tank from the Frank Miller comics. Yeah, yeah, that one where you see Batman just doing what he does, pretty much still. He's back in Gotham, you know, saving the day, doing everything. Yeah. Um, and then that's when we dive into uh, Lex Luthor, you know. Or yeah, they change it up to now. He's not just I'm not starting the Legion of Doom. Instead, he's talking about he's telling Deathstroke that who Batman is. Because that one felt like it was more being set up for Ben Affleck's Batman. Because the yeah. original idea again was for him to take on Deathstroke. That was supposedly the big yeah. big thing, you know, for that film. So that was in a way that was setting up that. Um, and, you know, with, with that, and then, of course, you know, Deathstroke just like, you know, now I can drink to that, you know, I have something to drink to. And then that's when we dive into the, 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 mo the most Zack Snyder scene in Zack Snyder history. F-bombs. Yeah. Obviously shot Only by two F-bombs in this whole movie. So, yeah, so basically, it was supposed to tease, like, it was, yeah, it was another Bruce having another nightmare vision. But this time, it's supposed to kind of tease what Joker said, tease the multiverse. Yeah, because he explains about, you know, you trying in in these other worlds. So it's like, in a way, like you said, that means the Barry we saw was a Barry, not from the future, but a Barry from another Earth, trying to warn each Earth, like, hey. Exactly. This, you, you know, she's the key, she's the key, she's the key. So now we know, because we even saw that in the vision he had when reviving Superman that, like, Lois is the key. Now we know why he's always said that. Yeah. So it sounds like that one was. Uh, it still feels like that was setting up to something like you said of, of them introducing the multiverse or the you know the different worlds and things like that. So you know you know it shows that uh, it showed that Arthur was dead. It look it sounds like Darkseid killed Arthur. Yeah. Because uh, and now Mira is the queen. You know, yeah. and of course you have Cyborg still being Cyborg. You see Future Barry, you know, with the full math of what we saw before. Yeah. Um, and then we see Deathstroke. He looked like he teamed up with Deathstroke. And of course, you know, most of all, he, killed, he joined up with uh, Joker. Yeah. Which was a really cool, uh, to be honest, it was a scene that honestly didn't be necessary. It just felt like it was just added on because they wanted to kind of like, hey guys, you know, 
Here's Jared Leto as Joker again, you know, type of And look, I'll be honest, yeah, he did way better here than he ever did in the Suicide Squad film. Yeah, you know. Just um, in that one scene alone, he did a great job. He did, um, but like like I said before, was this scene necessary? Not really. No, not really. It, 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 especially even if, they, even if he wasn't in this scene overall and they just showed up, you know, Superman, then fine. You know, fi you know, without the Joker, I'd still be okay with it. Yeah. You know, but it felt like it was just add on last moment. You know, where it's just like, you know, what's that in Joker? It's that Jared Leto in there. Yeah. You know, but yeah, that was that was part five, six, and the epilogue. Well, at, at, you forgot the end. The very. very oh end. God damn! I'm, Which I can yeah. see, like, look, because remember, I, I in the last part I talked about how they should have had that scene in the and they kind of did. So, yeah, that would definitely be a scene I would take out is uh, March Mayhunter visiting Lois. I think to take that one out and leave this one in as more of like the mid credits or after credits showing him, you know, kind of setting up going, there's more Justice League to come, you know, it's like, this is just the beginning and he just showed up. I mean, even though I wish they could have worked on his lines a little bit more at the end of it, where instead of saying, you know, it's like, you know, uh, you know, people know me as a Mar Mar uh, Martian Manhunter, but you can call me John Jones or something. You know, it's something. Yeah, so, okay, so, uh, so the overall thoughts. So overall, here we go. Yes. So here we go. The questions, men ultimate questions. Yes. For question one, we don't have to talk deep into these. Better than the theatrical cut. I hate to say it, I, I, I definitely enjoyed it better than the theatrical cut. Same here. Magic cut. Does it need to be four hours? No. Yeah, we we discussed this already in the other parts, but uh, you probably shave off a little here and there. Some scenes that there's some scenes that you can still keep in there that are it, vital to exp like the exp exp vital yeah. exposition. Yeah, you can still keep in there. I can see this honestly. I can see this being at least three hours. At least three hours. At least. Or at least, for me, it's actually, for me, it would be like at least two and a half hours for me personally. I would say three. I would say three because there's a lot more exhibition than I was expecting it to be that they ignored in the theatrical cut. Okay, those are the questions. Okay, the panel to one, the one that's been blowing up Twitter. Would you hashtag restore the Snyder cut? Now, no. I'm not talking about my interpretation where they just do the three a three hour one I think of. No, just three four it, hours. The everything it, good and bad it, about this Snyder cut. Well print I know what you're saying. You're saying, you know, should they bring back this universe? Basically, the Snyder So basically yeah, restore the Snyder first is pretty much saying that make this it's what remember what I always told make you canon what, in the other films. what was going to be the biggest issue with the Snyder cut, which would they make you know this isn't going to be canon? Yeah, that's the that's what Restore the Snyder Cut is. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. like what people want this canon to where in future movies they bring up maybe past events or bring up this from uh, this version of the yeah, from this version. Film. Yeah, so that's why I ask you: Would you hashtag Restore the Snyder Cut? I honestly would want to. Honestly, okay. I would. I would. I for me personally, I would only because it's like this. It helps. This gave character balance so well for every character in this film. This film pretty much balanced each character well um, to the point where even when you, you start watching their other movies, it's like you know this character, you know how they think at this point. You know, what their thoughts are. So that's me personally. I would love I, to see them make it canon again. So, personally myself, it's yes and, and no. Yes, I think this one should be the canon but no at the same time because there's some definitely some issues that this version of the film still has that mm -hmm. this film has because if honestly I'm not, I'm not asking for a grade this is my personal opinion my, no, no, no. I'm not asking for overall grade I don't want to do that but personally I thought the actual cut Justice League was like a B minus yeah. Snyder cut Justice League a solid B yeah a very solid B in my opinion because yeah. it's still the problem is a, it's still Snyder, so there's still issues throughout. Mm -hmm. But B, on the other hand, though, I'd rather watch this version again than with the theatrical cut because there's a lot more better there. There's no weed and stuff, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, that's my opinion. Is that I think this is a stronger effort for a Just League film overall. Yeah. Do I still think they should have pulled the MCU out? Of course. Yeah. Of course, it would have helped out so much this film. It probably would have been four hours. It probably would have been what you said, two and a half. It, you know, if, what, what yeah. you would to res, two and a half. For me, for me personally, 
Yeah, this was. And I and I have to agree. And all and and pretty much, what what I love, and this is what kind of DC needs to lead and lean into, or at least you know Warner Brothers, uh, you know at least you know Warner Media like lean into, and that is you know like how I kept mentioning if you you know throughout my action I keep bringing it up is that it you could you could heavily tell. We you know on the theatrical release that was like it felt marvelous you know Marvel like in a way, only because in that one there were always button heads. This one, it made you know a lot. They he helped kind of explain why they got along. They didn't bump heads. It's like they brought up and they explained to the point where they like they all made yeah. an agreement. Because the big yeah, of course what you're saying very much is the biggest positive the Snyder Cut can give is. It provided exposition we wanted from the theatrical cut. Yes. It explained why they didn't like they 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 explain why like they didn't go after Motorbox after Superman was arrived. They explain why Lois was there instead of it just being oh Batman's just smart he knew mm -hmm. this was gonna happen. And, and the biggest biggest one like I said which kind of like 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 oh they explain why the mother boxes were awakened. Well that too and that's where they came to an understanding of why they all came to understand why. They need to bring back Superman. They find, you know, it's like they all agree. Compared to the other one where they're like, they're all disagreements. They're like, he's gonna come back as a different, you know, da, da, da. they're bumping heads and stuff like that. Here, that's why I loved it. It's, it separates itself from what Marvel does. Marvel, you look at it, yeah, they bump heads. You know, they argue. They go here. I'm not saying they have to be perfect. I'm just saying it's like give them a good explanation of why they would agree on it. Why they would be like, you know what? I, you know, I, 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 I like what they're coming from. You know, something like that. Uh, you know, you can still have, you know, here and there disagreements, but not to the point where they're bumping heads, where they, you know, giving the cold shoulder like they had in the theatrical cut. You know, where you know Wonder Woman wasn't really it was pissed off at Batman because of you know maybe certain things he may have said or this or that. You know, to Wonder Woman at the time. You know, um, I just thought it was just like I said, they did a great. That they really separated itself. From Marvel, we didn't like I said the theatrical cut. I don't know. You watch it and it feels like it's Marvel. Even if you don't tell me we didn't attach to it, it feels like it's Marvel. Yeah, there's so many better aspects of this movie. Like you got a much like lengthier, better act performances from both Ezra Miller and Ray Fisher. Like, you got and, and like I said, you got great storytelling for each of these characters, especially for Cyborg and Barry. You had so many great emotional moments for them where you felt for them. You were like, wow, these are some powerful moments of who they are. This helped explain and set them up for future films and stuff like yeah. that, who they are as a character. Yeah, they sequel they sequel bait so many different things in this with the night versus yeah. new nightmare visions. With um and with dark side, sh and even like if go. they never ever make this canon, at least use this as a as a base or at least a format to follow. Of like, this is how we need to do it. Yeah, you know, if we're gonna do it right, if we want to make our other uh, our own universe, you know, multiverse or at least connection of our own universe for DC, let's follow what Zack Snyder had set up in his version. You know, I'm not saying copy and paste. I'm just saying learn from what he did. You know, for like helping explain the story, yeah. helping to live in the character uh, part. You know, um, it, that that's my opinion. That's that you know, and that's what I think of it. And I just, like I yeah, said, so I still enjoyed it. I still so yeah. thought it was good. So yeah, guys. Overall, our consensus, pretty much for the Snyder Cut, is that it while it it while it, while it is a much better interpretation of the film, it still stuff it still had. Oh, let me reverse that. While it still, God, it was a good way of saying this. I know I had it in my brain before we started. While it is a better version than the theatrical cut, it still suffers from the same problems the theatrical cut did, as well as some of the Snyderisms. Yeah, exactly. As well, is it? And it's easily, but easily though, I would recommend watching this over the theatrical cut. At your own pace, of course. At your own pace. You know, for, for the love people, of God, at your own pace. Yeah, because we were hours. fortunate that we were we were not busy today. Yeah. So like, but at, at your own pace. at your own pace. But I mean. Again, it, it's something that. It, I mean, at the very least, they separate it into parts. Where if you want to pause and watch the rest of the film later, and that's what they did. They set it up that. where it's like you have these little mini intermissions where you could pause it and be like, okay, let me come back to it later, or okay, I finished this part, let me come back to it later tonight. I have to go to work or something, or it's like you could watch it, or, or even if somebody has it online where you could watch it like in like seven days or something like that. You know, go watch each part. It's up to you. And again, 
you know, if you didn't like it, if you were like, no, I, I, you know, I, w I wasn't a fan, I still don't like, you know, how Zack Snyder took it, that, 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 you know what, you know, that's, that's your opinion. Everybody has an opinion, we, this is our opinion, this is our thoughts, you know, and what we thought of it, and, and like you said, you know, for me, for those who follow the channel and follow, you know, who we, you know, for, especially, you know, follow, you know, how much of a huge, massive DC fanboy I am, at least, you know, again, like he said, I have to agree with them. You know, a theatrical B minus. This was a B. This was a step up. There were still some issues, but you know what? It was still an attempt to deliver. You know, deliver somebody who had who had envisioned this, who wanted this story to be told, but things got in the way, and he, you know, but you know, the fans spoke up, and you know, we finally get to see his vision of what he wanted in his Justice League. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, would I want to see Ben Affleck come out as Batman? Hell yes. You know, probably will not happen. Well, I'd love to see Henry Cavill come back. Even, even more yes. You know, it's it, there's a lot that I want, you know, for some of these actors to move forward with their character because they've done this film kind of like you said, kind of like opened up more of their chops, you know, their acting chops and what they can do with this character. You know, and I can't wait to see how they're going to do it with Black Adam or even uh, the next, you know, the actual solo Flash film. You know, it's like, I can't wait. But, again, like I said, these are our opinions. You know, if you, you know you agree, you can disagree. You know, you can put your input on what you think of it. You know, but, like I said, the, to us, this this was good. We enjoyed it. We're not saying it's fantastic. Oh, my God. It's, it's a mind. No, we're saying it was good. We, we actually enjoyed it, you know, compared to the theatrical version pretty much we actually enjoyed this yeah so other than that folks if you're new to the channel you can hit the like button if you want to talk to us more about stuff like this comment down below if you want to share us around share it around and if you like us just a little bit more than anybody else when it comes to talking about hbo max original films hit the subscribe button down below hit that bell icon as well i hate to bring this up now but what is it out of the whole film, did you have a favorite line or favorite moment? I knew we forgot something. Yeah, I, I forgot something. I did. Uh, favorite line or favorite moment or, you know, fa favorite scene that stood out. I mean... Sorry, give me one sec. I have my notes here. Yeah, so let's go right ahead. ahead. Um, you can't talk about yours. I'm trying to think, too. <laughs> You're trying to think, too. Yeah, because it just hit oh, me like you forgot to bring that up. That's why I said we forgot to bring it up. Um, uh, honestly, the easily favorite moment is just the end with Barry. I think I, th I think for me it was my the end with Barry. Yeah, I'm trying to think myself. I think I have to agree. I think this is the ending ending with Barry. You know myself. It just because that had me choked up. I started getting choked up. I started I started building up tears because I'm like the way he was talking about as if it's like this is this is it. This is my final big chance to show my dad what I'm capable of. You know, yeah. so what I'm able to do things like that that was like i said and he was the com comedic relief of this film to believe it or not yeah you know um, he really was it, it, it wasn't forced it was like all oh, this is this is who barry is so go on you know with our but um what is your guys favorite moment favorite line or favorite just you know epic moment or something that really just blows your mind in this film that just you could you, you really just were like blown away with it you know you're just like wow whether it was emotional whether it's funny whether it's just like Oh my God! The music was awesome in this scene, or just you know, just let us know in the comments down below. What did you think of Zack Snyder's Justice League? Um, did you think it was a step up? Definitely a step. Uh, mind you, just a step, not like a oh, we kind of all these stairs. No, a step up to the theatrical release. Um, you know, did you think that? Uh, do you think this should be canon, um, or do you think you know somehow this should be just the blueprint of what they need to use? kind of moving forward with their future films with like again, like I keep bringing it up black it was at uh, black Adam the next Shazam the next uh, flash the next Aquaman I mean what do you, you know what do you guys want you know for the DC what do you want like, to come out of this and even maybe you know for the DC film universe you know what do we want I mean I am just there's so much coming this year you know it's starting to film this year it's unbelievable but uh, put down what you thought of our reaction, not only to these chapters that we watched in this video, but also the entire film itself. You know, what are you guys' thoughts on our reaction? Um, did you enjoy it? Did you have fun with it? Um, do you want us to do more films? Definitely let us know in the comments below. Um, uh, but then uh, most importantly, we thank you, thank you, thank you 
for watching if you got up to this point. So yeah, as far as like he said, as far as a the special pre we're, we have no have official name for it, but as far as these special presentations go, just let us know down below what you want to see from us next. Right now for SRB TV itself, we got a whole slew, well, we kind of got a whole slew of stuff. We got Falcon Winter Soldier, we got Umbrella Account, we got Animaniacs, we got upcoming stuff coming in the coming months. I've already brought up and a bunch of other videos. But make sure to check out our stuff on our channel for SRB TV. Mm -hmm. And of course, let us know down below if you want us to do more movie reactions. Yeah. Right now, we've talked about it. Uh, if we do them, it would probably only be once a month, considering our already busy schedules as it is. Yeah. So it'd be a once a month kind of thing. It would be one of those, what is the movie of the month that we should watch? Exactly. So, but you guys, it's up to you guys. Let us know down in the comments below what you guys think about that overall. But until next time, though, I'm Kristen. I'm Christopher. This has been a very tiring filled episode of SRV TV special presentation. Now for me to go ahead and start editing all these videos. Fun. Fun. See ya. Later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out our previous reactions or any one of our other SRV shows, check out one of our playlists down below. If you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and Stardust at Super React Bros.